To all the pastors, theology students, and saints who have attended today's Shincheonji online seminar, I am pleased to see you. My name is Bae Hyo Jae from the Philip tribe of Shincheonji, Church of Jesus, and I will be the host for today's event. Firstly, I sincerely thank those who have come to listen to the seminar. Through God's promise and its fulfillment, I hope this is a time where we can find who I am according to the Bible and be filled with grace and be moved through the word of life. Now, let us first start with a prayer of thanks to God who allowed this time. To our thankful and gracious Father God, Firstly, we give you all thanks for leading many of these precious people to this testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter Seminar. We are all one family within God. When we listen to you and the word of life with a yearning heart, please allow even our hearts to resemble you in your image and likeness. Through this time, when we realize the promise in the Old and New Testament and its fulfillment, please bestow all the people here the blessing of heaven and eternal life, and please protect them so each and every soul can be together with the Holy Spirit of heaven. Please allow the instructor who will be delivering the word to be especially overfilled with the Holy Spirit from heaven so the hearts of all these people who are listening can be moved and please fill the things that we need. Please receive all this glory and as we hope that we will be overfilled with God's endless grace and love. We pray all this in the name of the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, now is the time to listen to the Word. Today, we will listen to the Intermediate Lesson 18, with the topic being the effect of Jesus' blood that atones sin. Now, let us go into each chapter of the Old and New Testament, and I hope it will be a gracious time when we can realize the amazing secrets and its fulfillment inside the 66 books of the Bible. Now let us welcome instructor Han gil Yun from the Philip tribe who will deliver all pastors, theology students, and saints who have the hope in the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. It is really good to see you. I am Han gil Yun, the head instructor of Chuncheon Church of the Philip tribe of Shincheonji, Church of Jesus. We sincerely welcome all those who are participating in the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter seminar. The title of the word we will study today is Intermediate Lesson 18, The Effect of Jesus' Blood That Atones Sin. The main reference chapter will be Hebrews 10. Regarding today's topic, there may be pastors who know this content well because you read the Bible a lot, and there may be those who don't know about it well. But I hope you can listen to my lesson today well, and I hope we can understand what is a way to atone our sins with Jesus' blood through this time. I'll first briefly introduce the reference chapter. Hebrews 10, the main reference chapter for today, was recorded approximately 2,000 years ago. And the recorder, it was Apostle Paul. The main point of today is about the effect of the blood of Jesus that it can atone people's sin. To whom and when does the blood that Jesus gave have its effect? We will find out the time and the subjects. Jesus has died on the cross for our sins. 
Before we find more about this atonement of sin, let us briefly look into the background as to how sin entered the world by looking at the history inside the Bible. The background as to how sin entered this world is first, there was a sin angel appearing in the spiritual world, and that was how Satan, the devil, the enemy came to be. This spirit that goes against God deceived the first man, Adam, through the serpent in this physical world. As Adam broke the covenant with God, he sinned and betrayed, and thereby, sin began on this earth. The wickedness of men grew more and more in this world, and because of that, People have become entities like a book with sin recorded inside, like a bowl of sin. Eventually, the Creator God, who is life, left this global village in Genesis 6. As such, death reigned over all people, and the devil became the one who rules the whole world. How will be the heart of the Creator God looking down on the lives of the people who have fallen into sin? A man is upset even if he loses a small thing and wants to find it again. But God the Creator has lost the whole world and even people. So God wants to find back the lost global village and restore everything as before. Then, what is God's purpose to achieve this will of God? Firstly, it is to seize and lock up the dragon that makes people commit sin. And then, it is to create God's new kingdom and new people whom the problem of sin have been resolved. After the sin of Adam, the people who are born through the gene of sin of Adam all walk the way of sin. However, God wishes to create God's new kingdom and new people on this earth who are born of the seed of God. And God made a plan to come down to that place where the matter of sin has been resolved and fulfill the world of paradise that God reigns over. Here, the most important thing is that as God left the global village as sin grew in this world, the matter of sin must be resolved in order for God to return to this earth. In order to resolve the problem of sin, people caught lamb and goats as recorded in the law at the time of the Old Testament. Then, could sin really be atoned through this method? Also, how did the law and sacrifices start in the beginning? In order to find out how they started, let's read the words of Exodus 19, 5-6. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession, although the whole earth is mine. You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. As we see in Exodus 19, 5-6, God made a covenant with the people of Israel who came out from Egypt at the time of Moses and then gave them the law to keep through Moses. When we read the words of Leviticus 9, an animal like a male goat had to be caught and offered as a sin offering. The blood of an animal that was killed on behalf of the person who sinned was taken before God. What was the role of these laws given through Moses? And why do we have to know about this? In order to find that out, let us read today's main reference, which is starting from Hebrews 10 verse 1. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, 
Make perfect those who draw near to worship. If it could, would they have not stopped being offered? For the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. Amen. Here it mentions that the sacrifice of the law cannot make perfect those who draw near to worship. If the sacrifice of the law resolved the problem of sin and cleansed the worshippers, then they would never have to feel guilty for their sins again and would not continue the offer the sacrifices. However, it says that was not the case. As we continue to see in verse 3 and 4, it says, But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins, because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. We can understand that through the sacrifice of the law of Moses given by the blood of a physical animal, the atonement of sin is not possible. So ultimately, the role of the law was only a shadow of the good things that are coming in the future and was to make the people realize and think about sin. Then what will be the good things that are coming that were shown through the law? This was the atonement of sin. God had hidden His plan of the true atonement of sin inside the law. Now, let us look at the time of the first coming when Jesus came. Let's read Hebrews 10, 5-7 together. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, He said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for Me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written upon me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. Amen. It says that God did not desire sacrifice and offering. Also, it is written, He was not pleased with burnt offerings which was a whole animal being burned, and the sin offerings, which was a sacrifice of sins for the purpose of cleansing sins. So it is said, there is a body prepared for me. The one body of the righteous prepared for the atonement of sin. Thus, there is this one person it says that as it is written about me in the scroll, I have come to do God's will. According to the book of the scroll that is mentioned here, thus the Old Testament Bible, there was a person who came to this earth according to the promise and fulfilled the will of God. You know very well who it is. Yes, it was Jesus at the time of the first coming. Jesus became the sacrificial offering and bore the cross and shed His blood for the atonement of our sin, sprinkling the blood of bulls or goats on the sinners could not bring the atonement of sin. However, the atonement of sin was only possible through the blood of Jesus, the righteous. Jesus shedding His blood of sacrifice on the cross, this was a true sin offering that leads to the atonement of sin. Like this, Jesus became the reality of the law. The event of showing the effect of Jesus' blood, the Lamb, started from Exodus 12. The people of physical Israel at the time of Moses were captured inside Egypt and were under slavery. God sent ten plagues to Egypt in order to save these people, and the exodus of coming out of Egypt happened. As they escaped the plague of the firstborn, which was the last tenth plague, in order to escape this plague, 
In Exodus 12, a lamb was caught and its blood was put on the sides and tops of the door frames, and its meat roasted over fire was eaten. By doing this, the plague passed over that house, and that is why it is called the Passover. As the plagues pass over, this becomes the Passover. This day of Passover that the people of Israel kept became the festival commemorating this day of how they were saved as they safely came out of Egypt as a plague passed over them through the flesh and blood of the Lamb. Then how did the true reality of this event at the time of Moses appear at the time of the first coming? Let's find out by reading John 6, 51-58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said he is a living bread that came down from heaven. He said that those who eat his flesh and drink his blood will have eternal life, and he will raise them up in the last days. The reason why Jesus said this is because he was a reality of the Passover lamb that brought salvation through the flesh and blood of the lamb at the time of Moses. In John 1 verse 29, it said, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7, it is said that Christ, who is a Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed. The reason why Jesus is referred to as a Lamb like this is because Jesus is the one who allows the atonement of sin and only when one eats the flesh and drinks the blood of Jesus, there is salvation and eternal life. If Jesus is the Lamb, then what will be His flesh and blood? It will surely not be the real physical flesh and blood. In John 1.1, 1, 1, God is said to be the Word from the beginning. In 1 John 1 verse 1, Jesus is also called the Word from the beginning. If Jesus is the Word, then the flesh and blood of Jesus will be the Word of life of Jesus. To summarize, the history and law at the time of Moses was a shadow, and the physical reality of the Lamb of Exodus 12 was Jesus of the first coming in John 6. Also, eating the flesh and blood of the Lamb and being saved at the time of Moses was fulfilled in hearing and eating the word of life of Jesus and being led to eternal life. However, the work of God is not the work that completes at the time of the first coming of Jesus. Let's go on and read Hebrews 10, 8-14. First he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them although the law required them to be made. Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. Amen. 
In verse 8, it says that the sacrifices and offerings and the burnt offerings and sin offerings God did not desire nor was pleased with them. Also, it says that the first is set aside and the second is established. Thus, the first covenant through which God made a promise with the people of physical Israel became set aside and the second covenant, thus the new covenant was promised to be established. Now, let's continue to read. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Amen. What was planned through the new covenant is thus being made holy through the atonement of sin by the blood of Jesus. Also, with the sacrifice of the law that the priests offered day after day, it is said that it can never take away sins. Now, let's continue to read. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool, because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Amen. Jesus offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, and by this one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. As such, as a sacrifice of the law of Moses cannot atone sin, Jesus bore the cross and shed his blood for our sins. And with that blood, he established a new covenant. One must know the content of this new covenant in order to receive the atonement of sin and be the reality of the people who have been made perfect. The content of this new covenant is recorded in the words of Luke 22, 14-20, Let's read this content together. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Luke 22 is the content about Jesus gathering his disciples on the night of the Passover before he bore the cross and making a new covenant through the blood of Jesus. This was a fulfillment of the prophecy of Jeremiah 31 verse 31 as it was promised a day of establishing the new covenant. As we see the content, it says the Passover will not be eaten again until it finds fulfillment in the Father's kingdom. The Passover meal is a flesh and blood of the Lamb. Thus, it is a word of the blood of Jesus. Then why can it not be eaten again? That is because soon after Jesus bore the cross, Jesus had to leave. Therefore, until he returns, it is said to commemorate by eating the physical wine and bread. But what is important here is that it cannot be eaten again until it finds fulfillment in the Father's kingdom. 
But that also means when the Father's kingdom is fulfilled at the time of the end, that is when the Passover can be eaten again at that place. In other words, it is a promise that at the kingdom of God fulfilled at the Lord's second coming, the Passover meal, thus the flesh and blood of Jesus, can be eaten. This is a new covenant. Then, we must realize where is the blood that Jesus shed on the night of the Passover at the time of the first coming in order for us to eat the blood of Jesus and keep the new covenant? Everyone, what will be the book that contains the blood of Jesus that Jesus promised through the new covenant in Luke 22? Yes, that's right. It is inside the book of Revelation where the blood that Jesus shed is inside. Therefore, keeping the new covenant of Luke 22 means to eventually keep the book of Revelation. Then what will be the blessing that is given to the people who keep this new covenant? In the main reference, Hebrews 10, 15 to 18, let's see together. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says, This is a covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them in their minds. Then he adds, Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin. Amen. Amen. It is said, This is the covenant I will make with them after that time. It is not the covenant of the past made at the time of Moses, but it is a covenant that is newly established. Therefore, it is a new covenant. It is said about this new covenant that I will put my laws in their hearts, I will write them on their minds. Here the law is the law of the new covenant, so it is a word of revelation. It means this word of revelation must be engraved in the hearts and minds. Even a judge of the world must have the words of the compendium of the laws engraved in their hearts in order to be qualified as a judge and rule a judgment. Therefore, the one who has a law of God, which is revelation, recorded on their hearts, can receive the atonement of sin through the word that is recorded and also judge the world through this word. It is said that the flesh and blood of Jesus can be eaten again when God's kingdom is fulfilled. Therefore, if we are the believers who have the hope of salvation and eternal life, then we must be the ones who hear and keep the word of life of Jesus. When we engrave these words in our hearts and minds and be the ones who keep these words, then what will happen? It says, Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. It is said, The people whose sins and lawless acts are not remembered by God no more Thus, the people who receive the atonement of sin, I believe these are the people who will truly be blessed. These people appear at the time of the Lord's second coming when the new covenant, thus revelation, is fulfilled. Who are the people who have been made perfect who receive the atonement of sin through the blood of Jesus at this time? Let's find out by reading Revelation 5, 9-10. to And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. It is said that the people are purchased by the blood of Jesus and made to be God's kingdom and priests. The people who will eat the flesh and blood of Jesus in God's kingdom, as it was mentioned when the new covenant was made in Luke 22, are these very people, the kingdom and priests who are purchased by the blood of Jesus in Revelation 5. 
Also, it is promised in Revelation 7 that the multitude in white who have been washed through the blood of Jesus will come out. These people are also the ones who ate the blood of Jesus and received the effect of the blood. At the time of Revelation's fulfillment, those who have been born of God's seed, been harvested and sealed with the Word, and become created at God's new kingdom, the twelve tribes, and also, after this, the multitude and white who come out from the Great Tribulation are the people who receive the effect of the blood of Jesus. In Revelation 1, 5-6, it also says that Jesus freed us from our sins through the blood of Jesus and made us to be a kingdom and priest. Also, in Revelation 12, verse 11, they are the people who have fought and overcame the group of the dragon through the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. There is the event of fighting and overcoming the pastors of Satan with the blood of Jesus in the last days. To summarize, the physical reality of the people who received the atonement of sin through the blood of Jesus are the harvested and sealed twelve tribes Thus, the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, the 144,000 priests, and the people of the multitude and white that appear at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation. The effect of Jesus' blood appears on them. Therefore, we can say that the blood that Jesus promised and shed on the night of the Passover 2,000 years ago was for the new kingdom and new people of God that become created at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. This means we do not receive the effect of Jesus' blood by simply confessing with our mouth that we receive atonement of sin through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus was shed only for the people who have recorded the words of Jesus in their hearts and minds and kept and obeyed the word. And they are the kingdom of priests and the people of the multitude and white. Truly, let us all go inside the Bible and check what is the way of atonement of sin and whether I myself have been created according to the word of revelation and become the physical reality of the people who receive salvation through the blood of Jesus. Then what happens to the people who receive atonement of sin through the blood of Jesus and have the problem of sin resolved? God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven that we long for so much, will come back to these people. Let's read Hebrews 9, verse 28. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and He will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. Jesus was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people at the time of the first coming and to atone sin and bring salvation, it is said that He will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. Those who are freed of sin through the blood of Jesus when Jesus returns at the time of the second coming, they are God's new kingdom and new people whom Jesus returns to. As we see in John 14, Jesus said 2,000 years ago that He will go and prepare a place, and when that place is prepared, He will return and be together with us. That place is a spiritual world of heaven in Revelation 21, the holy city New Jerusalem. In John 14 verse 23, it is said to those who obey Jesus' words, Thus, the people who kept the new covenant of Jesus, the spiritual world of heaven will come down to them and be together. Also, in Matthew 25, the sheep-like believers will receive the kingdom prepared, thus inherit the kingdom of heaven. It is to that place where the sheep-like believers who kept the new covenant are gathered that God and the kingdom of heaven will come down to. As we see in Revelation 21, the holy city New Jerusalem, the spiritual world of heaven and God, is said to come down to new heaven and new earth. 
Thus, Shincheonji. As God and the kingdom of heaven is together with the people at the new heaven and new earth, what will happen to these people who are together with the spiritual world of heaven? It is a world of eternal life where there is no more death, the world of paradise where there is no more pain, the kingdom of hope, the kingdom of heaven that God and all who are living in this world long for. Then, what would be the way to eat the flesh and blood of Jesus that leads us to the atonement of sin at the Lord's second coming for us to enter into this kingdom of hope, the world of paradise? The flesh and blood of Jesus that we must eat is the new covenant, the book of Revelation. This revelation was sealed with seven seals and was in God's right hand in Revelation 5. As the time comes, Jesus takes this book and opens the seals in Revelation 6 and 8 and fulfills it. The word of this open book is given to an angel by Jesus, and in Revelation 10, this angel gives the book to one pastor at the time of the fulfillment for him to eat, and this is New John. And through this New John, the revealed word that has become open is given to the servants of God in Revelation 7. It says in Revelation 22 verse 8 that I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. Therefore, this new John is a pastor appointed by Jesus to speak on Jesus' behalf to deliver the events of the fulfillment of the entire book of Revelation. In Revelation 22, verse 16, he is a messenger of Jesus that Jesus sends for the churches. This messenger of Jesus is the one who speaks the words of Jesus on his behalf. Therefore, he is giving the Passover food, thus the flesh and blood of the Lamb. Therefore, the Passover food that is promised to be eaten at the Lord's second coming is a revealed word, thus the word of the open book that New John receives and eats in Revelation 10. Therefore, engraving the revealed word that is testified by New John in the hearts and mind is to eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, and thus this is keeping the new covenant. Now, let's look at the conclusion of today's words. Firstly, the time when the effect of Jesus' blood appears is a time when the new covenant that is promised through the blood of Jesus, thus, when revelation is fulfilled. Sin of a man can only be resolved by the blood of Jesus. But we must know that there's a time when the effect of this blood appears. That time is when the new covenant promised through the blood of Jesus, thus, revelation becomes fulfilled. Secondly, the objective of the blood Jesus shed 2,000 years ago was for the 12 tribes of Revelation, thus the 144,000 and the multitude in white. When Revelation is fulfilled, it is said that they are the kingdom and priests purchased by the blood of Jesus and the multitude in white who have been washed through the blood. The blood of Jesus was a blood shed for the new kingdom, new people, the 12 tribes of Shincheonji created at the time of fulfillment of Revelation. Thirdly, God and the kingdom of heaven come down to the promised new kingdom and new people, 12 tribes that are created through the blood of Jesus. It is to that place that has resolved the problem of sin where God and the kingdom of heaven come down to. And by that, it is promised that the world of paradise of the kingdom of heaven will be opened. All beloved pastors and saints, Jesus shed his blood on the cross for us 2,000 years ago. We must not let that blood of Jesus, who is the Savior of our lives, to be merited to nothing. I truly hope that we will all keep the new covenant made by the blood of Jesus, become the reality of God's new kingdom, new people, and all become the ones receiving the atonement of sin and be the family of God who receives salvation. 
In the next lesson, there will be an instructor who is much more competent than me, who will testify to the words of lesson 19, the sound of the last seven trumpet. I hope we can all attend and have time to receive grace. Lastly, let us complete by all shouting, We are one, with the meaning that we are one in God and Jesus. Beyond race, nationality, and religion, we are one in God. We are one. Let us all pray together. To the foundation of true life, Holy Father God, we truly give you all thanks and glory for guiding our footsteps to the word of life of God and allowing us the heart to realize. Today at this time, we have meditated the word of God with the title, The Effect of Jesus' Blood That Atones Sin. Before we knew this word, we were the pitiful lives of the people who were inside sin that had no choice but to die. However, through the great love of God and the precious blood of Jesus on the cross, we've been given this opportunity to receive the atonement of sin, and we truly thank you. Please allow God's unlimited grace to all the pastors, theology students, and all the saints attending this Bible seminar so everyone can accurately realize the word given today and become the families of God of the 12 tribes of Shincheonji created according to the Bible. Please guide all their footsteps even in the next lesson and allow the eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to understand. I pray all this in the name of Jesus who led us from death to life. Amen. We sincerely thank you for listening well until the end. All the believers must hear the last trumpet sound in order to participate in the hope of resurrection and eternal life. How can we hear the last trumpet sound that fulfills resurrection and eternal life? In order to find out, why the mystery of the last seven trumpet sound fulfills God's victory, resurrection, and eternal life. Let's read the main reference, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 till 54. As we saw in the video, the words of Intermediate Lesson 19, the sound of the last seven trumpet will be testified next Monday. I hope we can all attend and have the time to realize the precious word of life. The Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, is delivering the word of life to all the thirsty believers of the whole world through the official YouTube channel of Shincheonji, Church of Jesus. In addition to the word you heard today, if you have any questions about Shincheonji Church or the word, please contact the representative numbers of each region you see on the screen. We will do our best to kindly guide you and answer your questions in detail. Now, with the prayer that the Lord has taught us, we will complete all the orders of Shincheonji Online Seminar. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, power and glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much for being with us today.